the world famous illusionist and magician dynamo is with me dynamo great to see you i hope your friends family colleagues extended family are all doing all right in this covid-19 crisis yeah we're doing good obviously it's been tough times for everybody around the world and i hope everyone's staying safe where you are as well so far so good it seems like you have a almost like a karmic connection to india you know i've seen these youtube videos you getting out into the shanty towns what we call the slums you know regular middle class neighborhoods uh, in and around indian cities and doing your magic and the people are just going nuts the kind of love that you've received and you must be very sensitive to the fact that we grew up with magic we believe in magic and it's such an important part of our lives First and foremost, when I come to India, the fans are just absolutely incredible. It doesn't matter whether I'm in the slums or in the in the posh areas. Like for me, I grew up in I guess the equivalent of like a slum here in the UK in a council estate and I always felt that people from outside of that world didn't really take me seriously. So I had to kind of break down those barriers and then I wanted to also share that with other people when I went traveled around the world just to show that there is opportunities and it doesn't matter where you come from you can make yourself you know successful in any walk of life if you believe in yourself and like I said when I come to India like just the adoration from the fans is just like overwhelming I have such an amazing time and I just love everyone out there but dynamo I have to say this that magicians and clowns to me are great social servants if you ask me that because you guys allow us to sometimes break away from reality the pain of our daily existence or the bane of our daily existence and uh, i saw this wonderful piece that you did uh, in syria in lebanon uh, where you went around uh, yeah. and you actually met the children and hung out in the schools and put a smile on on everybody's face and you must really understand that social responsibility the, the fact that you bring joy to people's lives when i went to syria you know that well it was actually lebanon so it was to help get the syrian refugee children who have been displaced there into education as there's so many there was over i think 600,000 children not in education at that time and through doing that campaign we were able to get 400,000 of them into schools and hopefully we're working to get the rest of them in schools as well as i think you know education for the next generation is super important and just also like you said children have this this childlike state of mind where they believe anything is possible so it's important that we nurture and inspire them when their minds are still young and and potentially not being covered with skepticism uh, by feet, by being told you can't do this and you can't do that and i think magic is a great connector and a great way to kind of suspend people's disbelief well said suspending disbelief i'm going to come to why you live love traveling to do your magic i mean i i'm given to understand that dynamo beyond belief which is the new show also has you traveling around the world you could just be doing this all in your backyard in yorkshire or london or wherever you live but you choose to go out into communities in cities around the world and do your magic why so when i was a little boy i couldn't afford to travel anywhere it was tricky even getting off of the estate and going into the local town so i always used to read books i'd read books about you know the pyramids in egypt or you know i'd read books about india or, or just incredible places and i always dreamed when i got older to try and travel to these places but when i was young i was happy to like live vicariously through the author's interpretation of these places and when i obviously got more successful and got the opportunities to travel i wanted to kind of go and see the rest of the world and see how people reacted to magic in different parts of the world and it's been so incredible especially making beyond belief my new series where i've i've filmed in japan which was a dream of mine to do i filmed in russia filmed in mexico america and we went to dubai like all over the place and what's really interesting is when you put the reactions it doesn't matter whether the people are you know if they people working in in like factories or people you know famous people or you know just like a street sweeper when you put all the reactions side by side you just see human emotion and all the reactions are the same and it just shows us that we're all connected and that we're all the same and we're all equal and magic is a great way of kind of leveling that and and sharing an incredible moments with people that I'll never ever get to see otherwise how much of of magic is hard work precision and how much is is technique i think to be good at anything it takes precision and technique and a lot of hard work 
you know, anything that's worth doing is going to be difficult, but then the results are worth it. So for me, when I first started doing magic, you know, initially, I think I had a natural flair for it when my grandpa first started teaching me stuff and I picked it up quite quickly. But then it's been, you know, 25 years of constant work and progression to kind of get to the level that I'm at today. And in that aspect, uh, you know, you sh I see some of the, the magicians or the illusionists of the past, you know, the David Copperfields and the Franz Hararis and Houdini was much before our time. And you yeah, can't but help but legend. marvel. You know, you can't help but marvel saying they did not have the techniques that were there at our disposal and they still managed to do stuff. So uh, would you say Houdini is one of your big influences or is there any other well, magician? Houdini is a um, true master, one of the best. I wish I would have been alive in his time to see his performances for real because all I've heard about is the myths and the legend. But he was such an inspirational, pivotal character in magic. And he really understood the element of surprise and the element of kind of danger. And, you know, I definitely have taken inspiration. Like there's some things in my new show where I've kind of, you know, they're very risky and dangerous things, especially the finale to the whole series. I don't want to ruin it for you, but the, the big finale is probably the riskiest thing I've ever done. And the, the finale of episode two as well was one of by far the most dangerous physically. And if that had gone wrong, then, you know, you probably wouldn't be having this conversation with me right now. So, you know, I, I definitely have taken inspiration from people like Houdini who really pushed the limits of their body as well as their magic. Well, you know, I've seen some teasers of uh, Dynamo Beyond Belief. One of them has you in a in a really fancy car, yeah, uh, almost like a uh, how do I describe it? Like a NASCAR kind of thing. Is yeah, cars yeah. one of your is cars one of your things? <laughs> one second, Bunty. No. Excuse me one second. She wants some water. No problem. I'm going to give her some water and then she'll be quiet. Yeah. Lie down. Lie down. No barking. <laughs> my, my, it's my child. <laughs> so is cars right. one of your big things? I've always loved cars. and I've always said that if I wasn't a magician, I'd love to be a stunt car driver for like films like Fast and Furious uh, or, or James Bond, like the driving sequences. So yeah, whenever I uh, get the opportunity to bring cars and magic together, it's like the ultimate combination for me. I'm like a, a kid in a candy store. And when we filmed in Japan, one of the things I wanted to do was go to like a Fast and Furious style car meetup. So that was one of the best experiences of my life. And that is part of the finale to episode two. So yeah, definitely something that uh, I think people will like. It's such a cool thing. I mean, it's probably one of the coolest things I've ever done. Your, your TV show Dynamo Magician Impossible ran for what, five years, four or five years. And it was really loved. You picked up a lot of awards for it. Uh, for for people who haven't seen the show, what was that about? So Magician Impossible was the first kind of foray into a big TV series. You know, it was my kind of big break in some respects. I'd spent many years doing small bits of TV and trying to get myself known. And then I got the opportunity to make this show where I got to bring some of my biggest ideas to life, where I walked across the River Thames, I levitated at Christ the Redeemer. And we came and filmed in India. Uh, we filmed in Varanasi and we filmed at Holy Festival, one of the most incredible backdrops for magic ever in probably one of the most mystical, magical cities that I've ever been to. There was something definitely, magic was in the air when I was filming in India. It was so good. Um, and then we, we filmed them that series for pretty much like back to back for five years. And then I finished making that series and I went to do a, like a tour. And then unfortunately I fell sick and I had to put on my future plans on hold because I was trying to make this TV show like four years ago, beyond belief. But because of my illness, I've got Crohn's disease and I have you know, some underlying health conditions that have always kind of crept up on me when I've least expected it. But rather than just disappear completely, I would keep a video diary for myself and I would kind of, we documented as much as possible of the recovery. And that plays a big part 
in the new show Beyond Belief because I think it's important that people understand what I was going through because all of the magic that I created for the new show, I developed when I was in my hospital bed. I wrote down in my little notebook and the magic basically is very different from what you might have seen in the past, but in a, in a good way. And luckily I was able to get back to health and create a new show and travel the world. And finally, Beyond Belief is here, 18th of July, 9 p.m. on History TV 18. And I just genuinely can't wait for people to see it. Yeah, I, that was actually, you preempted one of my questions, which is you could have easily left the part about your illness out and just concentrated on the magic. But now that you say that it was such an important part of the process because you were writing that, that diary of yours, uh, it just makes sense why you would have that in the series. Um, has a magic trick gone drastically wrong ever? Did you ever get laughed at, a uh, small gig, large gig, and then just it went completely anxious about why didn't this go right? When I was first starting out, definitely things would have gone wrong. And I think early on, even the kids at school that I was performing for didn't really understand me and they would make fun of the magic. So it's kind of, you know, taken many years for me to find myself in it and feel confident enough just to be myself when I'm performing. I think the success of Magician Impossible and some of the previous successes before that gave me the self-belief to just keep pushing through with my my vision and my determination. And yeah, you know, obviously I practice as much as I can and I work hard to try and bring the impossible to life, but I am attempting the impossible. So if things can go wrong, they will go wrong. But luckily I'm here to tell the stories and tell the tales about what's happened and you're gonna to get to see it all in the new show. Uh, yeah, which brings me to uh, a logical question. I mean, uh, your name is, isn't really Dynamo. <laughs> it's something yeah. else. No, you my, know? my mom calls me Stephen. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure your your family calls you by your real name. So when yeah, did yeah. Stephen really become Dynamo? So in the year 2001, I was invited to, I, ironically, a Houdini Centennial event in New York, where a lot of the famous magicians were there, everyone from David Blaine, David Copperfield, Penn and Teller, Siegfried and Roy. And it was to honor like a hundred years since one of Houdini's like big, bigger monumental moments. And I asked, was asked to perform there. And halfway through my performance, this guy stands up, one of my peers, a magician called Aaron Fisher. He stood up and he goes, this kid's a dynamo. And for the rest of the week, all of the famous magicians, the people that I looked up to, would refer to me as the dynamo kid. And then as I came back to the UK and decided that I was going to make magic my living, um, I ended up just taking the name Dynamo, which was given to me by people that I was really, that I really looked up to. So it was kind of given to me by, you know, some legendary magicians in New York. Well, it certainly rings better for the world of magic when you say Dynamo as opposed to Steve. <laughs> There's no doubt on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we li we're living in the new normal, uh, Dynamo. I mean, uh, these you know, videos like this, interacting on, uh, on video media has become the new normal. I know you've done these sold out shows and you've had live gigs where you've traveled around the world 750 800,000 people across the UK Australia you're seeing is believing arena tour but my question is have you got a whole new bag of tricks uh, to do online are you still working on them if you have something ready I'd love for you to try something on me <laughs> <laughs> I am definitely working on stuff. I, I think it'd be interesting to do like a virtual tour. Um, and definitely once it's ready, I'm going to be hitting you up this year and giving you a little sneak preview. Um, but I'll save it for now. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got a, I think the new normal, it's good in some ways because it's forcing us all to, to basically adapt to the new situation. And it's causing us to learn and find new ways to do things. So some of the ideas I've got, that hopefully you'll get to see in the future, are really exciting using this new medium. And maybe, you know, I'd love to come to India and do a, a physical live tour in the future. But until yeah. that happens, you know, there's still definitely potential to do a, a tour online where people can just tune in from wherever they are and experience the magic firsthand. And I can only imagine what the Seeing is Believing tour must have been like. Did you like levitate over the audience oh, it, in the stadiums? Yeah, it was the, <laughs> it, it, I'm not going to lie. The Seeing is Believing tour was the best experience of my life. If I had the opportunity, I'd still be touring that show right now because it was so, so good walking on stage every night to 12,000 people and just performing in venues that, you know, I was performing in the same type of venues of, as like Kanye West and, you know, like, like big superstars. 
uh, where they do rock concerts and to do magic in those venues was unheard of so to be able to do that you know it's something that i just i want to keep doing and hopefully when the world goes back to normal i'll be able to do a tour and i'd love to be able to bring that tour to india as well Let's talk about some of the big ones. I mean, I've seen the one in front of Christ the Redeemer in Rio de Janeiro. It was absolutely stunning. Uh, for those of you who haven't checked it out, you must go on. It's on YouTube. Uh, he actually starts levitating with uh, the statue behind him, uh, Dynamo does. And of course, walking on water through the Thames. I mean, people, it was just amazing to get reaction shots from people around. At the time, there must have been some crazy media buzz. How did people react to those two uh, two magic tricks? I mean, walking across the River Thames was probably one of my most monumental moments. You know, people still talk about it today. And it, it was back in 2011. Can you believe it, it was that, that long ago when wow. I did that? Um, it all started from when I was a kid. I lived where I lived. There was Delft Hill Estate and there was Woodside Estate. And separating the two estates was this lake. And all of the cool kids would meet down at the lake to hang out. And I never got invited down there. Then one day, these two guys invited me down. So I was like, oh, cool. I'm one of the cool guys now. And I went down there. And when I got there, there was nobody else there. And they just took me down there because they knew that I couldn't swim. So they pushed me into the lake. And I was, like, practically drowning. And I wished then that I could walk on water. Luckily, my friend Wayne Jowett, thanks, Wayne, he saved the day and got me out of the water. But ever since then, I mean, when I grew up and became a magician, it became like an ambition of mine to walk across water, almost as like a, you know, as like kind of a getting my own back on the bullies. And that was kind of something, you know, when I got the opportunity to make Magician Impossible and to start doing these bigger shows, um, that I had to kind of bring that to life. And then, you know, we, we filmed all over the place, you know, obviously we, we filmed in India at Varanasi and, you know, we, I caused the candles to relight on the Ganges, which was such a, such a kind of emotional, experience for me as well as for the people around me and you know i think it is about sharing these moments of wonders because it's become so did you did you walk on the ganges too uh i didn't walk on the ganges this time it, there was a lot of people you know swimming and there's a lot of um it was obviously a holy festival so sure. it was very very busy time at the ganges when we filmed down there um we did think about it you know a lot of people thought, thought oh that'd be cool to do but i wanted to do something unique and different and special just for india but yeah, I think, you know, for me now, a lot of the performances, it's not even necessarily about me and, and my dreams. It's more about the connection with other people and showing people different narratives and different ways to look at things because we're all, you know, we're in a, live in a skeptical world where we're told we can't do this and we can't do that. Whereas I just want to be someone who shows people a different way to approach life and hopefully it will inspire other people to believe in themselves more. Yeah, but Dynamo, I know magicians never tell. I remember as a kid reading the Mandrick Magician comics and it said magicians never tell. They're but, good comics, know, though. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the original stuff right there. Yeah, yeah, totally. Stan Lee and yeah, all that. Uh, but, but I've got to ask you this question and you, you're free not to answer it, but how do you do it? How do you do the Christ Redeemer thing? How do you do the, uh, the walking on water thing? You know what? I dedicate my life to it and I, you know... That's the wonder. That's, that's the right question to ask because that's the question that I want people to think when I'm performing. I want them to just think, you know what? Like you get a lot of people who think they know everything, but then to be able to like stop someone in their tracks and just make them think, hmm, how does that work? Maybe there's more to life than I thought there was. That's the thing I'm looking for, the curiosity. Because I've always been a curious guy. And I think, you know, sharing surprises, especially in this day and age, it's really hard to surprise people because we have... We have phones in our pockets that literally can give us the answers to questions at a touch of a button. So to be able to share moments of surprise with people nowadays is, you know, it's an amazing thing. But, you know, we know that football is so huge in the UK. And I've seen you do a bit of a, a trick with, with a kid in a, in a Manchester derby. You also uh, levitated comedian Matt Lucas four feet off the ground in front of a, a packed Emirates Stadium in London. Well, that was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, so that talk about this. Impossible. Yeah. That was a long time. Yeah. Wow. I, I'd forgotten about that, to be honest. Um, yeah. You know, it's crazy when I think back. There's so many incredible moments that I've been able to share. And I feel like in some ways, it's still like the beginning. Like, you know, Beyond Belief is coming out this week here in India. And, mm -hmm. and I feel like it's going to almost reinvigorate people's love for magic and show them a new side to me that they haven't seen before. And I feel like everything that I went through with being ill and being in hospital and the adversity 
has changed me for the better and I'm looking forward to like trying to adapt to this new normal and create new magical experiences. So, you know, I mean, yeah, who knows where it's going to take us, but it's crazy thinking back at all the things I've done. And yeah, I remember levitating Matt Lucas um, and, you know, I've definitely got, I've had a lot of ideas for more magic involving football and, you know, that type of thing in the future. So yeah, watch this space. Yeah, and, and Dynamo, in that aspect, India is a very difficult country to please. In one aspect, you've got the sadhus, our spiritual gurus who've levitated, who've pulled ash out of thin air. You know, it's, it's, it's almost considered spiritual, the magic. Mm -hmm. And then you have the young kids who are on their mobile phones and want technology, you know. And I imagine that the show, Beyond Belief, will have bits of both, using technology, yeah. electronics, the new age, as well as a, a little bit of spirituality. Yeah, because of my illness and the condition, I ended up with arthritis in all the joints in my body. So I had to go back to basics because I couldn't shuffle the cards the way I normally do. I couldn't handle the props the way I normally handle them. So I had wow. to almost find a new approach. And in some ways, it meant almost going, for want of a better expression, I had to kind of go back to analog. And then obviously, throughout the show, I kind of go back to the future. So it's a great juxtaposition of, you know, to the simplicity in the magic but also then bringing it into a, a modern era and for the new generation, using the things that the children of today are used to seeing. But yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's definitely the best magic I've done by far. And the way the show is shot is so cinematic. We filmed any, everything using anamorphic prime lenses, which give it a real cinematic feel. They're the sort of lenses you use to film feature films. Like, you know, like they use the same lenses on, the, on some of the Star Wars films. So wow. it's that type of level that we tried to get, but we still wanted to have the raw street feel of it. And we tried to film all of the magic with just one take. So there's no camera edits, there's no cuts, so that you, you're seeing everything as you would if you were there in person, just to give it a real different dynamic than any other magic show out there. Yeah, you've got to be sensitive to the fact that kids now can, with their apps, put anything in their living rooms and their bedrooms, you know, yeah, from yeah. bears to... Uh, <laughs> To magicians so you've got to make it really real and make sure that it doesn't you know sound cgi or or look uh, you know graphics or vfx oriented so that's a really important point that you made there you know when i was a kid there used to be a a, a massive magician called pc sorkar and then that pc sorkar Jr. yeah yeah and now his whole family is into magic and you know they live in the eastern part of india which is kolkata and things like that and you know he used to wear this huge maharaja hat and come in and go out and it used to be a furious frenetic pace show i can never forget that you know my dad took took uh, took me as a kid you, you mentioned your granddad briefly i mean they always say magicians start off with card tricks but do you remember going to your first magic show where was it and and where and who took you so it's really interesting right so the first person that showed me magic was my grandpa, but he didn't do card tricks or anything like that. He, he had matchbox and it was full of matches and when he put it on my hand, he'd snap his fingers and the matches would disappear. And I literally, I don't know where, I still don't know how he did it. And then he would show me things, you know, using like, using, you know, beer mats and stuff that he would do at the local pub. But then the first actual magic show that I got to see live, I was kind of spoiled in some ways. I was on a vacation with my grandpa and we went to a place called Memphis in America. And it just so happened at the time, David Copperfield was filming his latest TV special. Wow. And he, and he, we managed, my grandpa had surprised me and he's got us like tickets to be in the live audience. So that was the actual first proper magic show I'd ever seen. So I got to see the legend David Copperfield doing his thing for his Tornado of Fire special. And, you know, seeing someone like that kind of perform in, on such a big stage it definitely was a huge inspiration and showed me that maybe I can make more of magic than I maybe was doing at the time. And are you completely self-taught? I mean, you, you, I mean, uh, now you've got YouTube specials and this and that, but uh, you know, back in the day, I'm sure everything wasn't online. Uh, did you read books? Did you see shows? How, how did you, do you see the telly and then teach yourself? Most of the things were self-taught. Like I think my grandpa would show me things, but then I would try and develop it and, reading like superhero comic books, I would just be inspired thinking, all right, what if I could do this stuff for, for real? You know, and I would take inspiration from that. And I also was quite young and naive. I didn't really have a, we didn't have a TV license, so I couldn't watch TV. But my after school job was working in a video store. 
And the video owner, store owner gave me a, a VHS player and he would let me take home films each night. And I'd watch all these movies, but being naive and not having television, not really understanding the world at the time, I thought that all of these films were like documentaries. So I thought like Superman was a real person. <laughs> and I, you know, I, everything I was watching, like James Bond was a real guy. So I would try and say, oh, I want to be like these guys when I'm older and try and bring their ideas to life. And then that's kind of, you know, always inspired me. Was your dad, uh, was your granddad a magician uh, or was he just my, passionate about magic? My grandpa was, he was a soldier in World War II. Wow. And whilst he was in the war, I believed he, he picked up some skills to keep the morale high for all the troops, you know, in the spare time when they were in the barracks. And he, as far as like, long as I've ever known him, he would always show me really cool bits of magic. And he was just like the life of the party, but he wasn't a profession for him. He, when he left the army, he was worked in the mills in, in Bradford. Uh, like we had a lot of the big wool industry in Bradford and silk industry. So he worked in the mills. Um, but as, as for me, he was the most incredible person I'd ever met. And he's a constant source of inspiration. And I feel like me performing is trying to keep his legacy alive. And hopefully, I know he's, he's no longer around, no longer with us, but hopefully, you know, he'd be proud of where we've taken magic and taken his legacy. That's beautiful. Listen, I've seen you on the Jonathan Ross show, uh, show with uh, Emma Watson. I've seen you on stage with Ed Sheeran. Uh, you've done a bit with Snoop Dogg. There have been so many memorable moments, celebrity or otherwise. Uh, talk to me about a memorable show, a gig that you've been part of. So, uh, I think, well, I'll talk about two. One of them was a bit of a surprise. I did this show in India. Uh, it was the last time I was in India. It was a couple of years ago and I was flown out to perform at a private party. But I did not expect at the private party to be hanging out with SRK. That was insane. Like, you know, he's it, such, such a, a cool guy. Um, so yeah, you know, it was a, it was a private event. So I didn't, we, we were, it wasn't like we could get a picture or anything, you know, it was just because it was a closed, closed party. Um, but yeah, that was really cool to kind of meet someone, you know, he's like an absolute legend. Um, so that was something that we might, when I think of my last trip to India, I was like, well, that was cool. Like, I wonder what will happen next time I come. Um, and then I think for me, the biggest surprise was when I was performing my show at the Auto Arena. And the nighttime show, we were going to be filming it live for television because it was like the end of the scene is believing tour and we we're going to do a big extravaganza where it goes out live on TV at the same time. But there was a matinee show in the afternoon and I told my manager not to let any, to, to not to do any meet and greets after the matinee show so I could get myself ready for the TV filming in the evening. But it came knocking on my door after the show and he goes, oh, just, can you just come meet my friend? He's brought some kids, just want to come get, come get a picture with them. And I was like, oh, all right then, you know, we, we still won't go do any pictures in the, in the, in the meantime so I could get ready for the television special. But all right, we'll, we'll do it quickly. And I walked in this room and Brad Pitt came running up to me with his kids and he was like, Dynamo, that was insane. And he was trying to recreate the magic and him and the kids were like just loving it. And he, he bought like a Dynamo magic kit and the magic books and all the merchandise. And yeah, I, I didn't even know that Brad Pitt knew who I was. So to see him kind of backstage, you know, my manager had kind of, he didn't tell me, but he knew that he'd secretly come to the show and brought the kids, they'd hide out like a whole box and basically they watched for sure. And then, you know, he brought him backstage and I got to hang out with Brad Pitt. So, you know, I mean, yeah, that was a big surprise and something I'm always going to remember. You know, I, I still get a little bit starstruck, you know, with people because for me, when I'm performing magic, you know, I am obviously, I'm kind of, it's what I love to do. And it's when I feel the most alive. But then when I'm not performing, you know, it's like, what do you say to someone as cool as Brad Pitt? or SRK, or, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. So you've covered both Bollywood as well as Hollywood, and you've just proved that you're a Bradford boy. I mean, they're surrounded by Asians. You must have grown up, uh, and, you know, Shah Rukh is such a legend, uh, and the Asians must have really driven home that point yeah, <laughs> back yeah. in Yorkshire. <laughs> That's wonderful. Listen, is there a trick that you really want to do? You know, something that you, you know, something like walking on the Thames, something that really speaks to your soul and you, you want to work on it and do it in the future? I mean, I, th I think first and foremost, I really do want to create a live tour that can be brought to India. You know, I wanted to bring Seen is Believing to India before, but I think it just, just trying to set it all up, it's very difficult, the infrastructure is, you know, it's kind of hard to try and make it work. But definitely like the fan base I've got in India and the support that I seem to get, when the messages I get online are absolutely incredible and it just really makes me want to, 
be able to bring some magic to India again and just to meet as many people as possible and to travel around, you know, all the beautiful places. So I think yeah, but... an India tour is something that I've got my sights set on in the future. So well, somehow, this is the time to do it because uh, uh, Bono and the boys from U2, Katy Perry, Dua Lipa, they all got their planes in with their gear, flew down and did some great gigs. Uh, and, you know, we, we could do with uh, a live Dynamo gig. <laughs> that would be lots yeah, of yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, it'd be, it'd be amazing. You know, it'd be amazing to do it. And, you know, have, have all the people that, like I say, have watched the TV shows just to get to come and see it live and yeah. get to experience something they'll never experience ever again. My last question is, what do you want to say to all those young budding magicians, just kids in their backyards or at small little birthday parties doing card tricks, hoping to be the next uh, David Blaine, David Copperfield, the next Dynamo? What is your advice to young budding magicians? Keep practicing every day, work really hard and perform as much as possible. But most importantly, have fun with it because when you're enjoying it, then your audience are going to enjoy it as well. And, you know, it's amazing, actually. I get so many videos sent on Triller and on Instagram and on my YouTube and you know, even on, on Twitter from all of the fans in India and the young magicians sending me their videos of them performing and asking me for my, you know, feedback. Um, so I see some amazing ones. So it's really cool because, you know, it's really good that they're using modern technology to share their skills. And I look forward to seeing where the future of magic goes because it's definitely in safe hands. But, yeah, keep practicing, keep performing and have fun. Dynamo, I can't wait to see Dynamo Beyond Belief. All the love in the world from uh, your India fans. Thank you for this conversation and speak soon. Cheers. Thank you very much, Rishi. Have a good one. Stay safe.